Hi, I'm Malanka. Welcome to Active Galactic Videos. So as you know, there's a total solar eclipse coming up August 21st, 2017. And we've been getting a lot of questions about how solar eclipses work. So today, we're here to explain the details. If you've been reading about the solar eclipse online and looking at different articles and maps, you've probably noticed that the path of the eclipse has a sort of S-curve to it. And we've been getting a lot of questions about why that is. The reason for this curvature is because when you're looking at the path of the eclipse, you're basically looking at a straight line that's being mapped across the curved surface of a globe. When you take that map, the map of the straight line on this curved surface, and flatten it out into an image that you might see online, that flattening out distorts the original straight path, and it's what introduces that curve. If you've gotten really excited about eclipses, you may have looked ahead to the next eclipse that'll be visible from North America, happening in 2024. And if you've looked at the map, you'll notice it looks very different. The eclipse happening this year, in 2017, starts in the northwest near Oregon and ends in the southeast. The eclipse happening in 2024 starts in the southwest near Mexico and ends in the northeast. Why is that? In order to set up our demonstration, first we had to make sure everything was to scale. This is our Earth, and there are four moons that fit across the Earth. And there are 30 Earth diameters between the Earth and the Moon. As the Moon passes between the Earth and the Sun, we can see that its path is a straight line in the actual geometry of the eclipse. It's when we take our three-dimensional map of the eclipse and flatten it out into a two-dimensional map that we see a curve. The other detail we need to keep in mind is that the Earth's rotational axis is inclined 23.5 degrees to the plane of the Sun. Eclipse paths look different from year to year because of the tilt of the Earth's axis of rotation and the time of year. As Earth orbits the Sun, it maintains this 23.5 degree tilt. In June, the orientation of the tilt of the Earth is such that the North Pole points towards the Sun. So the whole Northern Hemisphere is tilted toward the Sun. In our demonstration of the eclipse happening in August, the Earth is exactly two months past the maximum inclination that happens on the summer solstice, June 21st. In December, the Earth is on the opposite side of the Sun in its orbit. At this point, that 23 and a half degree tilt has the North Pole pointing away from the Sun, which means the Northern Hemisphere is tilted away from the Sun. The eclipse in 2024 will happen on April 8th, so we'll be almost four months past the winter solstice, which means the Earth will have this approximate position relative to the Sun. When we repeat our eclipse demo, all we have changed is the orientation of the tilt of the Earth on its axis to reflect the different time of year. And we can see that in this case, the same path of the Moon during the eclipse traces a different path across the globe. Let's take a closer look at these eclipse paths. To complete our explanation of the curved and crisscrossing eclipse paths, we've set up a slightly different demonstration. This demonstration is not set up to scale, but the basic geometry is the same. We put a piece of plastic wrap on the globe. This will end up as our two-dimensional map. Then we plotted points on the plastic wrap to mark the location of the eclipse at different times for the 2017 and 2024 eclipse and connected the dots to show how the paths of the 2017 and 2024 eclipses will crisscross each other on account of the time of year that they will take place. For comparison, we also plotted the path of an eclipse if it took place over the far northern part of our continent. Now we take our plastic wrap map from the three-dimensional curved surface of the globe and flatten it out to make a two-dimensional map where we can see how mapping the straight line of the eclipse path on the curved surface of the globe translates into paths that appear to be curved.